I was just doing uh, another video and realized the weed was really impacting uh, my mental clarity and therefore impacting what was coming out of my mouth and um, how much of it made sense and like actually did flow together, not just in hops in my brain. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But um, I, I wanted to talk about my love of weed because it is something that I was terrified to try for a very long time. Um, I didn't start using weed until like six years ago, I think. Something like that. I don't know. I've lost track track of the math at this point. COVID has completely fucked up my sense of time. <laughs> Truly. Um, if it happened within the last 10 years, it's all, it, it all feels like a blur. Um, anyways, it's, it was a later in life, definitely in my thirties thing when I started using. And I, until now have never publicly talked about it in any way. Like I'm pretty open with my Facebook network because they are people that I'm closely attached to in one way or another. Um, or I care about, um, and I, I've always shied away from talking about how weed has helped me. And I like sharing <laughs> tips. Like if I know someone needs help, I want to give it. Um, if I can, if I have that knowledge and, and this is something I know has worked for me. Um, so it, the shame I had around weed stopped me from being more open um, and maybe from helping someone else uh, as early as I could have. But I can't beat myself up over that because the shame was instilled in me. Um, and it, it was really, God, once you can see the connections between things, it just starts blowing your mind. Um, so pharmaceutical companies make their billions of dollars on stuff that we don't necessarily need stuff that might actually harm us stuff that can get us addicted to opioids and destroy our lives um this is all public knowledge and the rest of this is too obviously but it, it seems to be forgotten a lot um that they are the ones who lobbied to get weed criminalized and at the same level as drugs like heroin um it's a little plant i mean it can get big but it's a plant um the leaves are little um and it doesn't i'm not harmed in any way when i use it like i get I get kind of, I mean, different, different strains have different effects, but like right now I'm just kind of feeling relaxed. Um, and like, I feel my mind is a little more open and flowing than, um, it usually is. <clears throat> There's something about it for me when I get stoned, I have these moments of clarity, like I'm able to process through something that. I've been struggling to understand and it, it has happened every single time I've had a major, like really major therapeutic breakthrough in the last two years, I can guarantee it was related to weed. Like every single one of them, I was stoned when I had that moment of realization and it stayed with me and I was able to heal from whatever piece I was healing from at that moment. And move on and work on the next thing. And I've been trying to do that for my whole life. And this little plant is helping me do that. And before I started having these therapeutic revelations, 
um, I hadn't had enough therapy yet to, to get there. I was still working on, on way easier things to deal with, even though they felt impossible at the time. Um, I mean, it all feels impossible until you actually do it. <sighs> yeah. Um, but you can do it. Fight, please fight. You are worth it. You are worth fighting for and you are just as valuable. Your life is just as important as anyone else's. For anyone who needed to hear that right now, you matter and you're amazing and I love you. Really. Um, test me on that. I can prove it. Um, I don't know where I was going before that moment. It giveth, it taketh away. It does. Like, it helps me have those moments of clarity, but it also makes my brain pretty foggy a lot of the time. So I will be mid-thought and just lose it completely. It just can't find the thread anywhere. We're moving on. <laughs> um, but I know I was talking about my love of weed. Um, yeah. I started using, oh my gosh, this is what a goody two shoes I was. I started using after it had been voted by the state of Massachusetts to decriminalize weed and allow the sale of recreational and medical marijuana. That's when I started smoking. It was, it, none of the shops had opened yet, but once I knew that like, it was basically okay. It was just a matter of all going through all that red tape. Like that's when I felt like I could finally take that chance. Oh my gosh. I mean, I was in dare when I was in elementary school and I was like hardcore in dare. <laughs> like I remember, um, we had this, so our dare officer, officer Chris, who I still adore. Um, <clears throat> he asked us for a volunteer for someone to make, um, our dare box. And it was where we could put anonymous questions or, um, ask him to talk about topics that we, we wanted to understand more about. Um, and I, I took that assignment and ran with it. <laughs> like I had that box covered in dare bumper stickers and I was so proud of myself and I oh, um when I was in high school I was in students against drunk driving sad I was in there was like another level up from that and I'm blanking we would the the those of us that were like more involved we would go out to the local elementary schools and talk to kids about <laughs> not thinking that we were kids anymore, but, um, about how dangerous drugs are and how to say no and what to do if somebody offers you. And you know, the, the adoration and awe that little kids tend to have for cool teenagers was supposed to help, you know, help those kids want to stay off drugs. And I mean, to an extent, fantastic program. Awesome. I'm still proud that I, I was part of that. What I'm not proud of is the fact that I helped spread disinformation about weed and probably a lot of other drugs, definitely a lot of other drugs. Um, <clears throat> and I, I wish I hadn't. Um, I mean, I was trusting all of the authority figures in my life who were telling me this. I was trusting all of the news media who were telling me this. Um, so I can't blame myself. There's no blame there. I, I, yeah, I can't feel, I can't feel ashamed of that. That's not on me. That's not on me. But now that my eyes are open, now it is on me to do something about it to make sure that we don't keep perpetuating that myth, that we don't keep inadvertently or <laughs> purposefully harming people um, and ostracizing them and making them feel terrible or making their life harder. There's, oh, there was this story 
I saw this video, I, I think, or it was an article, I don't know. This mother was talking about how their family decided to move to another state that allowed medical marijuana for young kids so that their daughter could use the medical marijuana that was helping to end her terrifying seizures. She has, without the weed, she has seizures all the time and they can go on for so, so long. And each time that happens, there's a risk to her brain. There's a risk of damage each time that God, that, and it, and never mind, it prevents her from living a life. It prevents her from doing anything that like, I mean, if she starts having a seizure when she's old enough to drive a car, <laughs> like she's going to go off the road. So there goes driving cars, there goes independence. If she it has a seizure when she's out riding a bicycle right now, like she could tumble over and get really hurt or end up driving into traffic and worse could happen. She can't just live her life with this plant that does not cause her harm and only helps her live a more comfortable, safe, real life free, not completely free, but to a huge extent freed of what the whole family had to experience with each seizure. They had to leave their home in order to do that, in order to provide that for their child. They had to leave their home, which probably meant leaving a lot of family, leaving a lot of friends, leaving your network, leaving your job, leaving everything you're familiar with. All because of a plant. All because that plant is easy to grow. It is pretty accessible. It's something that people, if it was just everywhere, if it was just growing as the weed, it is. And it was just, we were allowing it to flourish instead of burning it down. <laughs> it not only could be providing us with more oxygen, thanks plants, but it could be providing so many people with relief and it's relief that doesn't come at least for me and the people I know uh, that doesn't come with side effects. Like not if I were to drink a couple glasses of wine tonight, I would feel that tomorrow and my liver might've taken a hit. My, uh, my body's gonna, gonna add that up over time. And that's why I went to weed because I had reached a point where my depression was so severe, but I still didn't feel ready to get into therapy. It didn't feel safe to do yet. Um, so I was drinking more than I really wanted to. Um, like I was having a glass of wine at night with dinner, but that glass was full <laughs> to the brim. Um, and it was my way of like letting myself be okay with drinking that much. It's just one glass. <laughs> Never mind that it's the whole bottle in that one glass, but it's just one glass. Um, but I had to numb, I had to numb myself somehow. And I didn't like the way it was making me feel. I didn't like the risks I was taking. I didn't like the limitations it put on me. I didn't like the money I had to spend on it. And I mean, I'm not saying weed is uh, cheap right now, but it could be. It could very easily be if we just let it grow in nature like it's supposed to. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so when I... I had talked to enough people who had been using weed for a while, people I really, really respected, um, admired, people, um, people I, I thought of as having their shit together. Um, when I realized that this was helping them and it wasn't causing them any harm, um, it was something I should really start considering. 
Um, and my battery is dying. Ugh. There we go. Um, yeah, so I started, I started using weed as a tool to help me get to sleep at night instead of drinking myself to sleep. Um, it helped me get it foggy enough and peaceful enough that I could doze off. Um, and there were nights when I was lucky if I got an hour, half hour of sleep. Um, when my depression was so bad, I was just exhausted beyond what I understood exhausted to mean before that. Um, and weed helped me get sleep. <laughs> it helped me relax. It helped me let the stress melt away for a little while. And my body desperately needed that release. My mind needed that release. There was so much happening in me that was painful in so many different ways. And weed helped to take some of that pain away for a while. Um, and now not only can it still do that if I need it, um, I haven't really needed it to do that lately. So that's been good. But, um, I have found like every single time it's when I've been on a high dose of weed, I have a very big therapeutic breakthrough um I had the the two that I never thought I would have um understanding why my mother made or reacted the way she did to my abuse um I never thought I'd understand that I I think I do well now I think I understand it better than she does at this point because she hasn't done the work yet but I'm hoping she does uh, I really 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 hope she does I'm trying to figure out how what role I can play in helping her get there but it is tough because I I have discovered as much as I want to feel like I am healed of my depression it can still very easily be triggered <laughs> and she's a trigger for me so I have to figure out how to support her and how to encourage her to go through the healing process give her the support she needs to feel safe enough to go through the healing process because I know she needs it um how can I give her that while also maintaining the boundaries that I need in order to protect myself. And I don't know what those boundaries are. I don't know what I do need from her. So figuring all of that out. Um, but yeah, it helped me, it helped me have that realization. It helped me let go of the anger I had held on to. It helped me realize for the first time ever that I actually was loved fully as I am and I deserved that and started loving myself. <laughs> um, they don't want us to have easy access to a plant that can do all of that because it's so cheap and they won't be able to make money off of it. I mean, they are, they're making money off of it. They're finding ways, don't you worry but they won't be able to make as much. So they want to keep charging us for pills that they alone can manufacture that have more terrifying side effects <laughs> listed in those commercials. Oh my God. And who knows what long-term effect they have on us. Um, yeah, if more and more of us start using weed instead of drugs produced by the pharmaceutical companies 
it would it would mean a major hit to their profits so they lobbied long and hard to get it criminalized and to create this taboo around it that it's evil and it's a gateway drug and it's gonna lead you to a horrible life of misery and sadness <laughs> when i have found actually it has done the exact opposite for me it has taken me from a life of misery and sadness into one of happiness into one of self-love into one of connection into one where i am attached to my life and happy to be here for the first time ever i mean it's not the only thing it was in conjunction with a lot of therapy with just endless support from my amazing network my people are I'm so fucking lucky I'm so fucking lucky it, there were and, and I am on meds I'm not saying we have to get rid of all meds that's mm -mm, I, I believe in science I'm saying maybe more of us should consider this little natural alternative and just give pharmaceutical companies a middle finger for charging just insane amounts of money for drugs that people need just to survive. I, I think that warrants a nice fuck you.